How's it going, everyone? Thanks so much for joining us tonight for this um, patient education webinar presented by New Jersey Plastic Surgery. The topic for tonight's webinar is a very, very important one. Um, really, as you saw when you registered, there was a huge craze uh, about just getting butt injections and having a bigger butt thanks to JLo and the Kardashians and things like that. And unfortunately, uh, many, many women were not able to uh, afford or choose uh, the optimal procedures or providers or facilities for that. And as a result, there are thousands of women across the world who are suffering from adverse effects of injecting silicone or other foreign substances into um, their bodies to try and um, keep up with this fad. So tonight's webinar, Dr. Barry DiBernardo is going to go through how um, his practice, New Jersey Plastic Surgery, is leading the effort to cure and to help alleviate those problems for people just like you who are joining this webinar. So again, like I said, keep it interactive. Make sure you are using either the Zoom chat tool or the Zoom Q&A tool with your questions. We're going to have a live Q&A session at the end. For those who don't know, Dr. DiBernardo has become a global uh, thought leader in the aesthetic industry. He is at the forefront, particularly his specialty is really focusing on using the latest innovative technologies to forge breakthroughs in procedures and really taking that cutting edge of technology and, and having it meet aesthetics. So that's why tonight's webinar is really enlightening and it's going to be really exciting for you guys to listen to it. Um, I don't need to go into all the credentials. You can see for yourself on the screen, he is, you know, like, like I said, globally famous. And this specific issue that we're going to go over We've got patients coming from all over the country, all over the world, coming to New Jersey Plastic Surgery because that really has become a destination for this specific um, issue. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Dr. Barry DiBernardo. Okay, thank you, Ronnie. And um, as always, uh, welcome to our New Jersey Plastic Surgery webinar series. And um, tonight's topic is a, a departure from what we normally do, which is our, our research is in, in aesthetics and lasers and devices, um, things to make you look better. But this is a different problem. And, and um, over the last few years, uh, this has been a growing problem that we've paid attention to and, and really developed a um, sequence that we do to really help people. Um, so let's get right to it. So there are many, many patients, as Ronnie said, from around the country, out of the country that are calling us because they have been injected, particularly in their buttocks, with something. Um, they are told it's biopolymer or a whole bunch of different words that sound good. But always when we go in there, these are really silicone injections. And they're not the dermal fillers we inject in the face that are very safe and FDA approved uh, fillers to plump or lift something. Um, but these are not approved products. And the reason they're not approved is because they are very bad for your body. And uh, we're going to, if you don't, like to see graphic things, you may not want to watch this, but we're going to show everything to you, um, what it is, what it looks like, what the problems are, and how to fix it. So um, let's move on. So what are the complications of getting foreign material injected into your body? Um, patients complain of burning, they can have infections, we see a lot of scar tissue set in, hardness of the tissue, deformity, um, migration of the silicone material away from where they injected it, and, and pain. Uh, and we're gonna hear from live patients tonight and they're gonna tell you their stories and 
they don't talk about all these things of, of what they went through and why this is not a good thing to get injected into your body. The more serious complications uh, can be silicone get, in, get into the blood vessels and travel to the lungs. This is called pulmonary embolus. And when anything gets into the lungs to block your oxygenation, that can be fatal. Um, if the silicone travels to the brain, it can cause a stroke. And uh, silicone oils are normally used as lubricants, caulking materials. And um, unfortunately, we from patients who these people injecting them are not um, medical professionals. Um, they don't do it in office. They do it in a hotel room or somewhere. And some of these products, unfortunately, might come from Home Depot. So very, very, very bad thing to do. So if you look on the internet and you're, you're searching about this, um, we, we just got a small collection of some of those photos we just pulled and and you can see a lot of, you know size might be bigger but you can see hard the tissue is not soft it's hard it doesn't look normal um, you could have indents you could have color changes infections rashes and um, even loss of the the surface of the skin as you see in the bottom right so Every horrible complication um, that you can think of, um, this material does to you. So over the years, um, we figured out a solution that works for us. Uh, I say it works for us because we've been doing it on our patients and they've been as a group seeming to get better and um, really has changed corrected the situation they were in. And in many instances, they've gotten their lives back. The procedure that we've developed is first to ask you to get a PET scan, a CT scan of, of the area. And that could be um, the, the buttocks, if that's where we're doing. And the reason this is so important and the reason we ask you to come get this is because when you come to the office, we want to see this material. We want to see where it is and map it out on you. And I'm going to show you that I use different tools for different parts, depending on what it looks like. So that initial CAT scan when you come in with your desk or, or your file is very important for us to, to look at. If there are very hard areas of thick scar tissue or changes in the skin, uh, those areas we're going to do what's called direct Incision. We make an incision there and we have to, it's going to form a line or a scar, but we have to get that stuff out. And, and there's really no way around that. If you want to feel better, we have to do that. The good news is later we can do things to make it look better as well. And then the third component is related to smaller particles that may not be near the incision. They may be higher, lower, or in other areas. And we use a technology called the VASER. Uh, this is ultrasound, ultrasonic liposuction, where uh, little sound waves create little bubbles that tease the fat cells apart. That's what it's made for. But in this instance, we're using it to separate the fat cells from these silicone particles as well. And then we go in and, and remove that. And I'm gonna show you photos of, of what those little particles look like when we go in with the vaser to have them removed. And, and here's an image of a CT scan. And right here, um, you can see, uh, do you see my pointer, guys? Um, yep. Th this is thick silicone embedded as thick, hard tissue. And that's what's showing up on the CAT scan. Then you see other little particles. We'll show you more of that as we go. And uh, that's, that's really the process that we do. And we're gonna get into a lot more detail and show you each step of the surgical procedure uh, as we go. But before I continue on, um, Ronnie got a message from one of our patients from out of the country, from Mexico, and uh, she couldn't make it tonight, but she was very, very um, 
concerned that she wants to get her message out to all you guys to uh, let you know what she went through. And um, she sent this to Ronnie. So Ronnie, you want to uh, read what uh, yeah, she Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll just take a moment. I won't read the whole thing for you guys, but you know, like we said in the beginning, um, the, the stories of the patients that, that we're dealing with for this issue really are powerful. And this is one of the stories of, of a patient, like Dr. D said, that um, I think really resonates with some of the other people that you know the practice speaks with. So long story short, this individual, she um, from Mexico, she heard from a friend about this real cool new uh, treatment that can give her her butt a better shape and it's not surgery and blah, blah, blah. And, and the friend was, you know, a well-known kind of stylist and, you know, had told her that, hey, this works great, blah, blah, blah. So she got it done. Um, you know, unfortunately, it didn't go as smooth as planned. She uh, was in extreme pain during the injection process. They gave her some sort of anesthesia, but it wasn't working. It just was very painful for her. Um, Anyway, she she ended up going through with the entire um, injection, and for a while it seemed like everything was okay. So these two doctors that had performed it, they were both from Venezuela. A couple of years later, they end up contacting her because they're back in uh, um, the area and they're in New York. So she went and she ended up getting some more injections, and they even told her we should put some in your arms to compensate the, the, the floppy arms, et cetera. So when she got this treatment again for the second time, she started to get a ton of different adverse side effects immediately. She was in incredible pain from the foreign substances that they put in the body. She had to go, undergo major surgery on both of her arms. She had to have um, additional surgery for the um, buttocks area, and she ended up having large scars, deformities, extreme pain. Eventually, she came to Dr. D and the team at New Jersey Plastic Surgery, and uh, she, you know, was able to, thanks to the process, the technology, and the um, the experience that Dr. D Bernardo has. She was able to finally find relief and recovery and, and get this treated and um, corrected after all of these many, many, many long years. So I just, again, I thought, like you said, that, that was really important because this isn't just about, oh, hey, I want to get some Botox. This is about the people who are suffering from this. It's life altering and it really is uh, powerful. And this patient, we're going to have the other patient speaking live to you, but um, I'm happy we put her on because she was very, very grateful, but she is also very concerned that everyone out there suffering from this gets the message out to them. And she's going to work uh, with us and particularly in Mexico to try to get uh, people taken care of. Before I go on, I just want to take advantage of uh, someone who's on the call with us. Um, Ronnie didn't do his introduction justice. Jason Posner is a, a world-renowned plastic surgeon. Also, he's in Boca Raton, Florida, Sanctuary Plastic Surgery. And uh, Jason and I speak every day about all these situations and all these problems. And Jason, thank you for being on with yeah. us. And um, maybe, and he might have a guest come visit us as well. But um, what before we get into the rest of it, you know, what's what's your view on on this problem out there with these foreign materials being injected into the bodies? Yeah. Thanks for having me on, Barry. Um, it's frosty. You'll see frosty soon. You know, these are these are difficult cases. That that's the problem with these. You know, they're, they're not easy. You know, every plastic surgeon does not know how to do these things. You need to go to a specialist like Dr. DiBernardo to, to, to do these cases. There's very few pay, plastic surgeons across the country or the world who will take these cases on. And, you know, the bottom line is you do anything enough, you get better at it. Most people. And, you know, and, and Dr. DiBernardo has done enough of these cases to get really good at it, which, 
there was some plastic surgeon would look at this case and say, I'd never touch this. I don't know what to do. Uh, scratch their heads. He's like, oh, I've done 10, I've done a hundred of these. It's easy to do. This is an easy fix. And I think, you know, I, it was, I was wondering why don't others want to do it? And um, I think plastic surgeons are used to doing elective procedures and, and breast augmentations. This is, this is not an easy procedure. You you don't know what you're getting into, and every case is a surprise when you get in. And that could be why many just don't want to take it on because you don't know what you're getting into, and, and they're and it's hard. Tough. And it's tough. Like you know, I I do a lot of revision breast cases, and you know the yeah. stuff that I think I do every day, people would look at like you're crazy. But you know, because you do them every day, it's easy. But you, you know, you've studied this technology, you've studied the problem. You study the techniques to fix it. You come up with your own techniques to fix it, and you do a damn good job. Bottom line. And how long have we been using the Baser technology? Oh uh, yeah, twenty years. You know, twenty years. 20 and years. before I go on, who who's our guest here? This is Frosty. Frosty comes to all call comes to all your webinars, Barry. Say hi, yes. Frosty. Bye bye. No, we're not ready to say bye bye. No, we're yet. not done yet. Bye -bye. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. Bye bye. All right. Frosty is a, Malu is, a Malukan, is a Malukan cockatoo. And once I'm on talking, she's noisy. Once I shut up, she's fine. Right, Frosty? Okay. All right. All right. Muting. Let's keep going. All right. So um, the patient we just talked about, um, this is her design of um, her surgical plan after we saw her and saw her CAT scans. So you could see uh, the green is the line where we had to make an incision. The red is circling the very rock hard tissue that was in there that you could feel. And then the brown area is V, vaser, that had smaller particles that didn't warrant being opened up or having the, having the incision go there, but we could reach all that and, and pull those particles out with the vaser. So this was her, her surgical plan. Uh, what is the vaser that we're talking about? It's a, it's a whole system of, of liposuction, as Dr. Poser said. We've used this for almost 20 years now. And it's good for liposuction because in those tough areas, it can separate the cells apart. But in this instance, we're separating the fat cells from these silicone droplets and then suction them out in faraway areas that we don't necessarily need to make a big incision for everything. These little bubbles cause a stream and that stream separates and then uh, that's how the ultrasound works. And, and this is all sound waves doing this. And, and you can see that the space, what, it, what it's showing you here under the microscope is the space between the cells is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's, that's from the energy uh, of these little bubbles that's doing this. And then they're separated and then we can easily remove them. In this case, what we're easily trying to remove are these very nasty silicone balls and droplets, which I will show you soon. Uh, the surgical portion is an incision. It removes the hard and the scarred tissue and then that when these little balls can break, the liquid silicones leaks out. That's why we said it's, it's a mess in there. And then we jet irrigate. Uh, we, we have um, something with three liters of saline and we just wash everything out thoroughly to get the particles, to get the liquid out, close the wound and eliminate those spaces. Now, Having said that, I'm, I'm going to repeat myself later, but do not think we're getting 100% of the silicone out because we can't. They're little microscopic portions. There's smaller ones. Uh, our goal is not, although we try to get as much out as we can and, and by debulking it, um, I think it's enough that patients feel better Sometimes we don't quite understand the uh, effect of the silicone on our immune systems, but patients can feel uh, tired, lackadaisical, no energy, lethargic. And this could be the effect of this big load of silicone in the body. And by whatever we're doing debulking, and as I said, it's not 100%, the patients feel better 
and have their energy back. So something, something's going right. Um, the, the next uh, patient had a long-term deformity and discomfort, had uh, two different sessions to clean this all out, and then incisions were hidden along the borders. Now, we, we see patients with different complaints, and, and you'll see some are more pain, some are more hardness, uh, but what I'm going to show you here is a patient who really had those things. But the, the big thing was there was a deformity there. And you can see on the left, just waves and irregularities and not a normal looking buttocks at all. In addition to it hurt. And, and she had like a, a boggy part of the silicone down here. So this is the photo of uh, after we treated her and and we tried to hide one of the incisions on the inside of the crease here. That's what you're seeing here. And then coming along the bottom, she had some hanging tissue just full of silicone that we removed. So we had a little L shape. She had previous scars down here from a previous attempt, but as you can see, that didn't do too well because she didn't look that good. But uh, we were able to um, get her Pretty smooth. These these healed up very nicely. Pretty much uh, out of sight, and uh, we were able to help that terrible deformity in her. You know, these incisions are relatively normal in buttock excisionary surgery. Sometimes people don't have silicone and they just have excess skin in certain areas. So the incision you used here is something you might use if they just had a bad buttock with no silicone too. So these are normal scars that are, that are very, very well hidden. And you could wear a bikini and you won't see these scars. Thanks for saying that. You're right. We try to use the aesthetic techniques that we would use in other procedures in aesthetic surgery for loose skin or hanging buttocks. Uh, but in this instance, we're doing it to get a large access to remove that, you know, this is rock hard, that this is not comfortable at all. The bottom of the buttocks had a uh, hanging skin because it just all sat there. And then all these other little particles all, all around the rest of it. And as we said, we try to get as much of this out as we can. You can feel it. You can feel the little balls with your fingers in there. So once we do the bulk removal, we wash it, feel again, and just keep going back and forth till we don't feel anything else anymore. Having said that, we're still not going to get out 100%. The next patient uh, we're going to look at had, quote, biopolymer, which sounds like a nice pretty word. It sounds like something that's all approved and I'm getting biopolymer injected. She had it injected in her buttocks and her labia. And uh, we did the CT scan for mapping to locate it in all those areas. And um, she, she uh, when she came in, didn't really know what it was because they're telling her this biopolymer and Said, oh, do you send it for pathology? Yes, we send it all and um, we, we need to prove what it is. But again, like it usually is, it was silicone. We removed it directly from her buttocks, directly from her labia. Uh, the peripheral areas were treated with the vaser and we tried to make an incision hidden in the medial crease of her buttocks. This is a CAT scan. This view I'm only showing you because this white thing right here, that's in the labia and, and we felt it. It was a pretty firm mass and we came in the side. So we hit it in the crease, removed it. And here it is. And, and you can see it's, it's not that small a mass. It, it's a few, it's two by three inches. And, and that was sitting right here. So that was the labial mass. Then getting the CAT scan, and I'm showing you this connected to the real photo. So what we see around with the green, there's a thick area on the CAT scan here. You can see it's this area of all these little particles here. And, and that corresponds to this. So we went very deep on the inside of her crease here, went from underneath, got all this out, I'll show you. And um, we were able to 
pretty much get most of that out as well. Uh, the brown area around here is where um, she had the other smaller particles that we did with the vaser. And here on the right, I'm grabbing and showing you the little clear balls. See, all these little clear balls are, are the silicone balls all throughout this area. Here's one, I grabbed it right there. That's, that's you know, the quote biopolymer that they put in. And on the left, you're, you're seeing us try to deliver this like a baby, this mass in, in one piece from the inner part of her buttocks. There it is on the left. And then you can see on the right, it, it's all cleaned out. And uh, we, we got pretty much most of it out of there. Uh, the crease, her incision, now we're pulling, so you're, you're seeing from deep inside here, but you can see we closed it and uh, that looks pretty good right afterwards. And that's gonna disappear inside. And here's some of the more of the hard particles more of the silicone droplets. Here's a silicone, you know, isolated clear silicone droplets. But these are the things that are throughout and uh, we do have to make an incision, but you can see uh, that closes pretty well. And anything else that might not look quite as good, we have them wait three to six months, let everything settle. And then we can go do fat grafting or, or whatever aesthetically uh, we have to do to make the area look as good as we can. The vaser areas, again, we're on the side here. And this is the um, liquid that comes out from the vaser. And it, it's hard to see in here, but throughout the fat, there's little silicone droplets in there that we've separated. And um, that, I'll show you what some of those look like in another patient, the isolated silicone. So our, our next patient, um, I believe um, we are gonna have her on live to talk to you. And um, let's see if uh, she can come on. How are you doing? Good, how are so, you? Okay, and um, welcome. Thank you for talking to everyone and um, our, patient that I just showed you. Um, she came from uh, California and um, we, we did all this and I'll just start by asking you um, the, can you just tell them what you had originally, they quote biopolymers and what they told you about it? Well, I had a dent in um, my buttocks and I wanted to fill in the dent and make my buttocks smoother and not have any little dent on it. They told me it was a filler. They said it was collagen or what, I don't know what. Well, I, they just said it was a filler, it was good. It was recommended by, the, by a friend of mine that got butt injections as well but like a full butt injection. She said, oh yeah, this lady's good. She, she was from Mexico. And I uh, said, okay, well, I trusted my friend. I, I did the, uh, fill, fill, they filled in the butt area where that, that area where you see the dent is at. And um, after that, um, it, it kind uh, at first it, it, it uh, looked good, but then within time, it, it started getting the dent started showing again. I guess the, the whatever was injected started like gathering together or moving and um, went more to the lower area on the left side and just started hanging basically. And um, I felt very uncomfortable and it was, it's like embarrassing. I can't wear pants because you can tell there's a dent. It was very um, cosmetically um, embarrassing for me. Also, um, I don't know, I, I was starting to feel really um, tired and fatigued, but this was like years after. I'm not sure if that was the reason but I'm, I'm starting to think it was because right after the surgery, like I, I recently got the surgery a couple of weeks ago, I feel so great. 
That was my next question. So you're done now. It's a couple weeks. How? What's changed now? What? What do you feel? What's better? I feel so much energetic. I don't know what it is. You also gave me some vitamins to take. I was. I'm. I'm. I'm like. I don't know if these are super women vitamins. Oh, or- the healthy cell. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm like. I just feel so great. I'm so happy. And I mean, I feel like a new person, actually. What what message do you have a message for all these other people watching that yeah. have this right now? Just make sure that when you decide to do any type of a augmentation or blood injections, you make sure that there's a it's an FDA to prove a certified doctor, you do your history. Um, and if you already have this problem, make sure you go to the right doctor. Dr. DiBernardo is one of the best in the world. I recommend him a hundred percent. He did a great job. I'm very happy. And I don't recommend you get, you do this but injections with any random doctor, you really need to do your 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 um investigation. Like, and then I couldn't find a good doctor to help me out with this problem. I started going looking, and I looked up Doctor Di Barnado, and I saw that he was like really like focusing on helping people that have these problems. And I just decided, you know what, this is the doctor I need. So. Thank you, you already Dr. answered. You already answered my last question. What made you fly 2,500 miles to New Jersey Plastic Surgery from uh, Los Angeles? Yes, it was very difficult to find a, a doctor that 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 really has a little bit more um, that has more knowledge on this situation, and I just wanted to make sure that I don't make the same mistake again. You know. So Mm -hmm. I did my homework, my due diligence, and I saw that, you know, you, you, you were looking into it, you were doing tests, checking out what are the substance that were, people were getting injected, and you had your knowledge on it. And I just wanted to go with the best. Well, thank you so much for coming in on and talking to everybody. I think you're going to help a lot of people with your comments. And, I hope um, so. Okay. Thanks again. And um, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. That was very insightful. Thank you. And let's move on to our next patient. So our next patient is, um, she has a quite a story and she's going to be on to tell us. She had a long history of multiple attempts at treatments. And she said she t- checked in, um, not go see with 50 different doctors to try to take care of this. But um, she'll tell you they were judgmental of her having done this. And her biggest uh, complaint, though, that was very impressive was that because it got into a very bad situation, she couldn't sit from the pain for four years. And then the material migrated into her skin. Uh, She had recurrent infections and uh, it it turned into a very, very bad situation that not only was horrible medically, but it really affected her whole life. Um, There were very hard areas that needed direct excision. There were remote areas that needed baser. And um, then we, we took care of all that and she'll probably wait for months and then we'll come back and try to make more cosmetic improvement. But, but the main thing is uh, her symptoms were markedly reduced. And that's all I'll say because she's going to be telling you herself later. Um, this is the involvement of her skin. And I, w- I was very uh, worried about this also because it, it was right in the skin. I 
was worried I didn't have normal skin to, to bring together perhaps. Uh, we got the CT scan and you could just see right, right under, right under here, uh, you can see this big mass of silicone material right here, mass of silicone material. And, and, and the worrisome thing when you look at the CAT scan is this all goes right up to the surface of the skin. If there's a little ball down here and we go in and remove it, that's great. But when it involves that much skin, that's a much harder problem and we have to get it all out. Then, uh, as I said, that these little tiny particles, which are farther away from where we're gonna be working, these little things, these little things, those are what we're going after with the vaser. And hopefully in the pictures, I'll, I'll show you like what these little balls look like when we, we suction them out and separate them from the other tissue. Uh, this was her, her markings. Uh, the the uh, incision was uh, gonna be the red area where we wanted to get out the thick skin and the involvement to the tissue. And then the far areas up here and around where we're gonna treat with the vaser. And um, then I just circled this uh, with the, the hard area that you could feel, which in my mind, all this had to come out because that's what was causing her not to be able to sit. In surgery, um, this in my hand on the left is, is this big mass coming out in one piece. Here are, the, and these, these are quite big. Uh, don't be fooled, these are quite big. So this is her skin, her hard skin coming out uh, and attached to that whole mass. And just again, I wanna jump back for you so, so you're appreciating what's going on here. Um, again, this is the photo she sent, the, the materials affecting the surface of her skin with repeated infections that is on the CAT scan, touching the surface of her skin, and then this is the mass, and this is the mass on both sides uh, that came out together. And then you can see it from the side, and I have a close-up. So look at right here is one of those big silicone balls sitting in this rock hard tissue. And again, the hard part is it went right up to her skin. Here's more separate silicone balls, so you can see them separately. And here's one after we removed the big piece, there were more embedded in her tissue. And um, that is what we're going after. The, the, um, and then, then once, once we remove these big pieces, then she, we will go back in, remember I said, we go back in and feel if there's more hard areas, we go get it, we go get it. And look at the pile of all of them that we had to get around her whole perimeter to get us satisfied that we cleared her out. And there was all these on the left side and there was all these on the right side. So that was a tremendous amount of rock hard tissue that she couldn't be sitting uh, and she'd be in pain. So here's the here's what I was talking about. The vaser, it breaks up the little balls and then we use this, this is the suction cannula that sucks out uh, the, the teased out tissue. So these are little balls that come out once we've separated them in the remote area. So you can see it really well in that picture. And this is the solution with the silicone in it on the right side and the left side. And then once we washed it all out, once we clean that all out, um, this is to you know to us as surgeons, this is beautiful. This is a whole clean wound now. And then my job next is not to leave a space there for fluid and things to collect. So we have to close that down by suturing it and closing what's called the dead space. But that that's the cleaned out wound with all of that material out of there. And as I said in this is a, a big job to get that out. Afterwards, when she first saw it, she wasn't too pleased, but the fact that she could sit down now, and, and this is what I'm talking about. Uh, I had to get all that out 
but later we're gonna do, we can rearrange tissue, we can fill it with fat, we can do things to make these things look better, but don't be fooled. Step one, you have to get better, you have to clear it out. And as our first patient was saying, she got her energy back because this stuff was not affecting her body anymore. So we're gonna talk to her next, but we also wanted to include this video of her day after surgery um, because she was just saying things about her situation that we thought we wanted to capture. So uh, let's, let's play that and then we'll have her talk uh, live for you. In the last year, I spent so many hours doing research for doctors and everyone tells you they can do it. They do. Um, the so first how, doctor. How do you know they can't do it? Well, try and error, but <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of them just promise a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And when you're in pain, you just want it to go away. Oh, yeah, so of course. You, and you're not thinking clearly either. You just want the pain to stop. So, and they're all saying they can do it, and they may not. And I what, knew you can do what, it. What did we say that made you think we could do it? I knew you can do it from the way you did my first marking. Oh. I didn't say anything, but after going through so many doctors, you start to pick up when people know what they're talking about. Uh -huh. um, and the areas that were my biggest issue, the solution you had for it was the most realistic one. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't sat in months. Um, even with the surgery pain, as you can see, I can sit now, and yeah. the only tension I have is the drains that we right. just took out. And you have surgery there yeah. also, but you're still much more But I can sit and I can touch my bum. I haven't touched my bum in a right. long time. I remember I couldn't even draw on it. Mm -hmm. And and I, as I told you, there's two parts. Part one is, I mean, it doesn't look that bad, but the goal is just get that yeah. stuff out of there. I don't, I don't care. We're trying to make it look as good as possible, but that's not the goal. Yeah. Round two, it'll change as it settles. It'll probably look better. Mm -hmm. And then we can do little things to then make, make it, it look, look good. Nicer. So it's a two-step yeah. process. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm glad you're better. I'm glad you could sit down. And yeah. yeah. We and did your the right people work. are so great. Thank, yep, yeah. thank you to the New Mary Jersey Plastic was, Surgery staff. I think Mary was the first person I got in contact with, and she answered every single question, honestly. It didn't even matter if it was the weekend, because when you're going through this, you just want to talk to people who know what's happening. And mm -hmm. I was texting her caller over the weekend, and she answered. Really? And yeah. then there's, oh, <laughs> I don't know if she want to be in the video, but... When from the first day I met her, she's just been the people here are so great. And right, well, that's why you know this is a very hard thing surgically for us to do, and I know a lot don't want to do it. It's hard. They should. It's hard, and um, we're we've been doing this thirty years, so and and we're a research center, so we try to figure out things of procedures or things that haven't been done or hard yeah. to do and that's what we do here so I'm glad they that should. worked even if it doesn't hurt now you should still do it yeah. because get it out early yeah that's your eventually advice. it's gonna catch up to you mine came a little early but it's, it's still good okay yeah. well very good I will yeah. see you tomorrow morning and yes. then you head back home yep okay great thank you <laughs> you look a lot more normal today well yeah again, <laughs> Thank. Uh, she she came up from Virginia, and um, Re Rebecca is uh, how far out of surgery now? Today is actually three weeks post op. Three weeks. So, I I think she has some uh, very important things to tell our audience, and and again, thank you for coming on to tell them. But tell them a little bit about um, you know what what you went through those years before, the years, you, the problems of what you were feeling. I had a dent <clears throat> and I wanted to fill it. I didn't want to do surgery because I felt like it was so dramatic. So I was just trying to look for a simple, quote unquote, simple solution to kind of fill that. And that was in 20, 2018, 2019. 
Mm -hmm. um, so just like Cynthia said, I got the fillers in and then I started noticing that they were dropping. So the dents came back. Um, and then that dent started to hurt so much. Um, and I, I, for the past couple of years, I was in the military, so I really didn't have a lot of time to worry about my butt. Um, a lot of deployments consisted of me standing. So I kind of neglected, neglected that for a very, very long time. And then um, towards the end of last year, I said, I want to go fill out that space again. Um, uh, a friend of mine told me about a friend of mine who said that they were, they had fillers that were safe. Um, and that's when I got it done. Uh, and immediately, honestly, cause I had done it previously. So I know what it felt like. Um, but for this time, literally the very next day I was experiencing so much pain um, and I kind of just thought maybe my body was sensitive or because I had already injected it. So I didn't pay too much attention. But uh, three days later was when the spots that Dr. D showed you where they were very, very dark. I started to see like a rise in the area and it was very tender. Um, and so I reached out to the lady and I said, hey, I'm experiencing, et cetera, et cetera. She said, oh, it's normal you know, give it time. Two weeks go by, my skin started to get black. Um, I can't touch the area. I can't wear clothes. I can't shower because the pressure from anything other than it just being bare was, it was so painful. Um, so I, I started like kind of getting help, um, going to doctors and seeking out how to fix the situation. And I reached out to the lady again and uh, she kind of made me feel crazy. Um, she told me that it was just my skin. Basically, it was my problem, not necessarily what she injected into my body. Um, and she promised me that what she injected was safe. So I was just having some sort of allergic reaction, which I think decreased my need to really seek medical help. I feel like had she been honest with me, I probably would have been a little bit more proactive. By the time I realized that she lied, I was already far gone as far as health wise. Um, so after maybe two, three months, um, I had to quit my job because I can't sit for work. Um, it, it was a lot. I isolated from everybody because when you do these things, you kind of also associate shame with it. Um, and so you don't want to tell people because you feel like they'll judge you. So I honestly was just suffering in silence. Um, I found a doctor who said they could do it. And they did um, smart lipo. Um, I went to her office. I remember crying and she told me she could fix it. This was in Atlanta. Um, I flew all the way there. She charged me way too much money for a job she didn't do. Um, mind you, I'm not working. So whatever I'm spending on these surgeries is from my savings and struggling already. She did the smart lipo. Two days after she did the smart lipo, I knew that she didn't do it right because all she did was melted the silicone. By this time, the silicone had gotten so hard. Um, and even part of my own skin that weren't infected, they started to get very, very hard as well. Um, as you can see in the video, I only got it on my hip area, but they started to migrate. Um, and so she melted it and didn't really do a lot of liposuction. So what happens was a few days after I ended up having to go to the ER because the silicone were traveling down my body like water flooding. Um, so I went to the ER, spent about two days there. Um, and it was unfortunate because at that time, the silicone had already suppressed my immune system so hard. And I didn't even know that's what it was doing. My blood levels was way too low for any doctor to do surgery on me. So I had to spend additional amount of time trying to boost up my immune system, which is almost impossible because the silicone is killing you 
and you're trying to get healthy to do a surgery to remove the silicone. So you can't really win in that area. But I found another doctor in DC, charged me a whole bunch of money, promised me a whole bunch of things. Um, and he performed powered assistant lipo. Um, that also did not work. Again, actually, I ended up staying at the hospital extra days after that surgery. A week after that surgery, I was walking and I passed out, went to the ER, um, and things were just getting worse. And then after that, I kind of decided that perhaps I was going to die. Um, I'm a very religious person, so I kind of tapped into that. And I honestly, I don't know. I don't know what led me to find Dr. D. But I was actually scheduled to perform my surgery with this, uh, another surgeon before I spoke to him. And from that conversation, from what he was telling me he could deliver and all those things, it kind of sounded like something I already heard before. And from my first virtual meeting with him, the first thing that he asked for was a CT scan. And no doctor had asked me for that throughout this entire process. Everyone, they just look at the pictures and they tell you they can fix it. So when he requested that, I think that was the first initial instinct, like, okay, somebody actually wants to see what's in there. Um, because I had taken a couple of CT scans, so it was showing up as foreign materials in my body. Um, so I flew to him the next week and, you know, he was very honest with me. Aesthetically, what he told me was not something I wanted to hear because we all want to look good, but the silicone was literally killing me. And I, I'm not even being dramatic. Like it was killing me. Um, and the, the plan that he had in place to help me, it made the most sense for what I was going through. Um, and in my video, as I mentioned, Mary, awesome. I mean, when you're going through this, it's, sometimes it's hard to talk to family members, but you know, it didn't even matter if it was the weekend. I had, I think I asked so many questions of the same questions so many times, but they were very patient. They were very understanding. And the best thing is there is no judgment. So you get to be as transparent as you have to be for them to be able to help you in a way. So that's so how, that's how great. It <laughs> that you know, that's a long, long story. And you know, you went through so much. And let's just play the tape forward to now. So we're a few in the video you were doing better, but three weeks later, how are you doing now? Three weeks, I'm great. As you can see, I'm today. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just started working again. This you got a new week. job, right? Yeah, I got my job. It pays better, thank God. Um, Health-wise, I feel a lot better. Um, I haven't had any dizziness or headaches. Um, and I, I feel great, honestly. I and you feel, feel like that load of silicone out of your body has, you know, relieved your immune system. Oh, absolutely. And I know the picture that was shown looks very dramatic. I did cry when I first saw it because it, it was just not <laughs> what I was expecting or used to. But as I'm healing, I'm seeing more of that space filling in naturally. So it doesn't look as deep. So I have more hope that over the course of weeks and months, it'll continue to fill out and we'll see how we can do a recon after. Absolutely. Well, we, again, we thank you so much for uh, giving your, sharing your story with everybody on here. And again, I, I think that's gonna help a lot, a lot of people to, hear this and um, that that's our goal. So uh, Rebecca, thank you so much. Have a good night. We'll be talking to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. So once again, um, the solutions and the goals, uh, we, we heard from a bunch of patients and um, hopefully their story is very um, 
powerful and um, can help a lot of people. So again, the solutions and the goals are eliminate as much bulk of the material, uh, material as possible. We have to make an incision for that. And as you can hear from the patients, we, you know, we don't, we don't have, you know, a scientific proof of all this, but it seems like cause and effect by removing that silicone load, they're feeling better, they have more energy and, and their, their bodies are, they're gaining their bodies and their control back. Um, we feel for any remaining small pieces, get them all out. I showed you that, uh, the vaser, uh, for teasing out those particles from remote areas, wash it all out in the final wound to remove as much liquid silicone as we can, close the space as best as we can, make it look as good as we can at that time, and then wait three to six months. And if something needs um, more help, if we think we can make it better aesthetically, uh, then we'll look at it at that time. And as Dr. Posner said before, that's what we are. We are aesthetic surgeons, and that's what we normally do every day. So in, in conclusion, um, many patients suffer from unapproved foreign materials injected into their bodies. These can have serious complications uh, and get worse over time. Fortunately, we at New Jersey Plastic Surgery and our whole team have created a sequence and system to help alleviate some of the effects and improve the appearance, comfort, and reduction of this nasty material in your bodies. Just again, if, if you're watching and this is a problem you have, you know, just, just call us and, and start asking questions. At, at this point, we have a lot of knowledge about it. Um, our whole team does, and um, hopefully, this is a way to alleviate these symptoms, problems, and, and effects of a, a very terrible um, procedure um, that unfortunately people don't know at the time that it is so bad. But um, we can't do anything about that. But moving forward, we certainly can. And um, again, thank you for uh, coming on with us. And uh, just call us and uh, congratulations to all the winners. Uh, Dr. Posner, thank you for coming on and ask, um, giving them your expertise. And um, Shirley, thank you. Ronnie, thank you for uh, your great production of these webinars and, and the rest of the uh, teams in uh, <laughs> Seattle and uh, California. And Ronnie about, in Fort Lauderdale. What about Frosty? <laughs> oh, Frosty, I forgot the star of the show. Can she say bye-bye now? Yeah, she, she went to bed. She's in bed. She went to bed. We, we kept everybody. <laughs> jealous, That's the bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good night, everybody, and uh, we hope to see you soon.